Hey YouTube, uh, Dr. O here. Got a 98 Toyota Camry LE here. Uh, customer wants transmission fluid and filter change. I'm gonna show you how to go about and do that so you can do that yourself. All right, so I went ahead and I got this filter kit here from Advance Auto. What I like to do usually when I'm starting one of these jobs is, first of all, just make sure you have all your parts. So this one here is more of a, more just a mesh screen than a fiber type filter. These transmissions you can probably get away with just doing a spill and fill, uh, you know, as opposed to you know changing this filter each time. So uh, the customer requested this, so one thing I like to do regardless of what I'm working on, these training gaskets usually come all wadded up, so sometimes it's good just to get them out and let them acclimate a little uh, while you're doing your other repairs, draining and stuff. It'll help you in the long run. Just get it out. Kind of lay it out flat. Stick some stuff on it here to keep it down. Now we're going to go under the car and I'll show you what you need to do there. Uh, once you get your car jacked up, I assume you can do that safely. Um, what's sweet about these Toyotas is they actually put a drain plug in the pan, which is fabulous. So it takes a uh, 10 millimeter Allen socket. This one here is pretty buggered up. That looks like people have been at it before. So we're going to take and tap socket up in there. These can be pretty tight. I don't know if this one is tight. Yeah, so that's pretty snug. Um, after that, make sure you've got a suitable, you know, bucket. Uh, I've got this little extra drain catch here. Helps catch all the mess. But uh, let's go ahead and drop the drain plug and let it go until it's uh, right down to a drip. And then after that, we're going to take and uh, bust the pan on. Now that you can see the, the flow here is slowed down, it, it'll continue like that for ever it seems. But uh, go ahead and just let that keep draining. I'm going to use our, whoops, oh, I'm use our 10 millimeter on our little cordless impact. Go around and take all the hand bolts out. So you can use whatever, whatever means you have there. All right, you see, we're back. We got the pan off. Like we just got the last step. Got to kind of sit in our pan. Next thing you want to do is, is remove your filter. Looks like there's three bolts that hold it on. You got a little wire harness right here, single wire, a little clip on that filter. So just go ahead and push that out of the side. We're going to use our 10 millimeter. Take the bolts here out of the valve body. Now you'll notice on these Toyotas, the two bolts that were in the back that run side by side are a different length than the one that was in the front of the filter. So make sure you don't mix those up. So yeah, like I said, the two that go side by side in the filter are shorter. One that goes in the front is slightly longer. So don't, don't mix those up um, or just, just be aware of, of where they go. So once you get those out, take and snap the filter loose there. Let, out, let that sit there. So. All right, so now that you've got the uh, training pan off, um, this gasket's coming off pretty, it's got a cork gasket on it. You do what you have to do to get the old gasket material off, um, whether it be a scraper, a wire brush, whatever, whatever method seems to work best for you, let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and start working the gasket off. Right, now that you've got the uh, gasket all off there, I assume you probably don't have a parts washer at home, so just grab yourself a can of brake parts cleaner when you're at the store. Uh, these are usually a couple dollars. Uh, they work great for uh, degreasing and drying, especially if you don't have a you know a blow nozzle or anything. You just take clean clean both sides of your training pan off too, so you don't take the chance of contaminating, you know, getting it on your hands and, and transferring it to the pan. So yeah, if you just go ahead and do that, if you just let that sit, you can see the you know fluids evaporating pretty quickly, so that dries it out pretty pretty fast. Um, another product we like to use here in the shop is this high tech. Um, if you're at the uh, parts store, uh, Permatex makes this. Probably a couple other companies that make this. Uh, but it's just a gasket adhesive. So if you're tinkering on cars and stuff a lot, you're doing a lot of things with gasket. This stuff is great. Uh, so long and short of it is, you spray it on. It makes like a high tech coating. It puts a, just a sticky coating on it. Um, really aids in putting in the gasket. So what well, you'll see here in a minute, we'll, uh, you know, I'll put on. Yeah, pretty, pretty little, uh, I'll put on two or three coats of, of this coat on, let it dry, it gets real tacky. Um, yeah, I'll do that a couple times. Uh, 
after that, I'll spray a little bit on the gasket and we'll stick it together and it really helps when you're going to put them on. And I guess it's fair to mention too to make sure that you put your magnets back in the pan after you clean those off. And I think that uh, the rest of that can of brake parts cleaner you have, just kind of spray off the bottom of the transmission here. You know, clean off the bottom of the bell body, clean off the mating surface where you're going to put the filter back on. This will help stop some of the some of the dripping, get some more of the clutch debris and material and stuff off. The other thing you're going to want to do too, depending on what kind of gasket you had, you're going to want to go around the surface of the transmission to bit the mating half where the gasket was. If there's any any stuck on there, any oil and junk and uh, this one's actually really clean so we really don't have to do much of this. I'm just going to take a rag and wipe it around after I get done spraying it down. Okay, now that you've got that cleaned off the best you can, we're going to put the strainer back in. So this one's more of a strainer than a filter in this model so make sure you've got your bolts three separated here. You've got your two short bolts. Your, your strainer should come with a gasket on it. If it doesn't, make sure you put it on there. Watch your wire. Uh, we're going to take this kind of stick up here loosely. All of our bolts started first before we go tighten the thing down. That one. That last one here. So, got one nose up there very lightly. Now, those bolts do go into the valve body. Uh, so, on these, I would say it's probably critical that you uh, torque these down. Hand tight's probably sufficient. The torque spec on them is 89 inch pounds. So being that we have access to a torque wrench here, we're gonna go through and do that. Kind of avoid any problems there. Like I say, you know, if you're doing it at home, I always say use your mind, not your muscle. Alright, so we've got uh, all three of those 89 inch pounds. Take our wire clip here, and our wires get back under that clip. The clips push down pretty pretty heavily, so I'm going to take it and uh, open it up a little bit. Stick it under it. And push it back up just to retain that clip. So that could have been damaged, you know, dropped during shipping, anything like that. So and then going to go through and just kind of wipe off anything that looks like it's going to drip on us when we go to put the pan on it. The cleaner we can get it before we put the pan on, the better uh, better chance we have of our gasket uh, adhering um, and uh, sticking well and not really uh, not giving us any fit. So, all right, we're going to go put the gasket on the pan. Our, our high tack should be good to dry by now, so we'll get that stuck on there and bring it over here and put it on. All right, so we're back over to the pan. It's probably been uh, five, ten minutes, something like that. You can see the high tack there's pretty pretty stringy pretty sticky stuff i've sprayed uh, just you know one layer on the gasket here a couple layers on the pan so we're just going to take and uh, paint these together and you can see this stuff's quite quite sticky so we'll go ahead and uh, we're going to just line this up all the way around anybody that spent any time fighting with gaskets trying to get them to stay in place will really appreciate this stuff Make sure your holes are all lined up. And you'll see the gasket now will stay right on there. Um, and I guess what I would say is really, I only ever put this on one side. Depending on the application, I only put it on one side. Uh, we certainly could spray this side and then, and then stick it up in the car. I'm not, I can't really say that it aids in, in helping it seal. I don't know that for sure. I think that's primarily on the gasket. It definitely aids for installation. That's what I like to use it for. I would leave one side not sprayed because if you ever have to pull this training pan back off, it's, it's a pain. This stuff does tend to make the gasket, you know, stick well. You go take the gasket off, it tears, pieces of the gasket stick to it. So it's easier to clean the gasket off the pan a second time than it is off the transmission. So. Um, it's just like I said, it's just my opinion. You can do it however you like if you want to spray it to make sure you know it seals great, uh, you know, fine. But uh, it's always been my habit just to use it to you know help hold the gasket on, you know, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's a water pump or you know, training pans, valve covers, you know, whatever, whatever uses this you know flat style gasket. So 
Uh, just go ahead there and you know just do it however you like, but that's just my two cents on that. seconds for it to come back and start getting around the ceiling surface. So if you've got to wait for it to drip, you know, wait, wait for, you know, wait another 20 minutes, half hour, whatever you have to let everything kind of stop dripping here on you. But we look like we're in pretty good shape. So we're not taking to set our pan back up on there. Line up the holes and just hold some tension up on it. Let's go ahead and we're going to go through and start all these bolt, bolt, bolts back in it. All right, so what you want to do is once you get all your bolts in, just go ahead and just start alternating your pattern. Uh, you know, I like to, you know, kind of prevent over torquing these. Just use a small, small ratchet. You know, just something choke up on the head pretty good. You get down here, you can, you know, you're kind of wild with it. But uh, yeah, just start going around your training in a, in a crisscross pattern. And start snugging these up. You don't have to kill them. All right, next thing you want to do is uh, get your, uh, after you've got them tightened down, take your drain plug. Make sure your washer is still in good shape, the aluminum crush washer. You know, most everybody will tell you to replace those every every time, but I've reused them. I've done thousands of training pan, drain plugs, everything. They reseal <laughs> all the time. So I can't see a sense in changing it. So go ahead and snug that down. And uh, that's it. We're going to let the car down, or you can take and uh, let your car back off the jacks, and we're going to fill it up. I'm going to show you how to check it out. All right, we're going to go ahead and fill it up. Uh, this car calls for Dextron 2 or Dextron 3, so we're going to use the Valvoline Max Life in this car. Uh, it covers that spec, amongst many others. It says 2.6 quarts, uh, according to the service information for a drain and refill, and it holds uh, about 6 quarts uh, total on a, you know, if you're doing a full rebuild. So we're going to put 2.5 quarts in it and then check it. Um, you're going to need a funnel. You're going to pull your transmission dipstick out. These funnels have to have a pretty skinny tip to fit in there, so we've got this long one we always use on transmission, so we're going to go ahead and just, uh, like I say, dump two and a half quarts in here. Uh, we're going to start it up, run it through the gears, and uh, check the fluid. Now that you've got your training fluid in there, go ahead and start the car. Hold your foot on the brake. Just run it through all the gears. Uh, first, neutral, drive, second, low. Then we're going to go back up. We're going to end it in park. We'll leave the car running. Let's go up here and check the fluid now. So the proper way to do this is it would be, you know, take the car out, drive it, warm it up all the way, and check it at, at, at full operating temperature. You can see on the stick here we've got our cold mark, our low and our high spot on the cold mark, and we've got our low and our high spot on the hot mark. So what we're going to be looking for, obviously, this, this is what I would consider cool. So we're, we're hoping to find it somewhere between the uh, top side of the cool mark and the low side of the hot mark, somewhere in this area here. So we want to do this with the engine idling in part. So on this one, we flip it over, we can see we're right in the middle of the cool mark down there. We're going to let it run for a little bit. Let some of this residual fluid that's uh, still in our transmission tube. Let that settle down to the transmission. That way we can make sure we get a real accurate reading. Sometimes it'll take two or three tries to, to get it. But I think we're at the lower half of the cool mark. So, like I say, we're going to let it run for a little while. Let everything kind of settle down. And uh, come back and check in a few minutes. All right, you two. We let it run here just a little bit. You can see we are right at the top of that cold mark. The high side of the cold mark. The car's not nearly warmed up yet and it certainly hasn't been driven. So now that we know we have, uh, we have enough fluid in there, uh, we're gonna take and set it down. I'm gonna take it for a test drive. I'm gonna let it warm up all the way, bring it back in. And then we'll just double check the fluid. It should be somewhere between the warm mark and the hot mark. So if that's the case, We'll look back under it, uh, check it for leaks, and uh, follow the day. So, hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it's helped you to service your own gear.